So if you're already here, please say hello. Hope everyone is having a great evening. And we've got about one more minute to go, so let me know if you've joined us. I'm just checking comments here. All right, so we have about one minute. Please say hello. Hi, Chris, welcome. Good to have you tonight. All right. We're gonna be working in our mini catalog tonight with the Fine Art Floral Suite. So you might wanna get your mini and you might wanna grab some note paper and pen. Hi Gail, hi Tina. Yes, I know that impending ice storm, absolutely. Hey Sue, hi Carolyn, hi Leslie. Yes, I understand that Many of my friends are going to be getting the ice storm. I live in Suffolk, I'm very close to the beach, and I believe the ice is gonna miss us. We might have a, a little bit. We're gonna have lots of rain and maybe a tiny bit of mixed precip. So, hi Suzanne, hey Pam. So nice to have you ladies tonight. It is 7.30. And um, you might want to grab paper and pencil tonight. You might want to jot down a few notes. We are going to explore the um, fine art floral suite. So we're going to dive in and we're going to make a card. And I'm going to show you all kinds of tips and tricks with this suite. So, hi Kelly. Hi Toddy. How are you? Yes, I hope your internet holds up. It's hard when there mo there's more than one person on the internet at home. It really does slow things down. Hi, Peggy. Hi, Lee. Hello, Margaret. All right, so good to have you ladies. Um, are you ready for the Fine Art Floral Suite? I hope you are. Hi, Joyce. Now, if you are brand new tonight, please say hello, tell us where you're from. It's always fun to see where everyone is from. Hi, Simone, hello, Melissa. Hi, Carol, hey, Laura. So good to have you girls tonight. I hope you've had a great Wednesday. Mine's been pretty good. So, all right. Um, we are going to be making a card tonight, and here is a sneak peek of it right here. <laughs> well, good, Kelly. I'm so glad you can't wait to see it. Um, this is a really awesome, fun suite. I'm really glad that I have the entire collection. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Pam. Hello, Jean from Oregon. Hi, Carol. Wonderful. All right, well, let's get started with announcements. We'll get those out of the way. Um, I do have an upcoming class and I do have a free tutorial. So um, I do wanna share those things with you before we start in on tonight's suite and tonight's card. So, oh, I'm glad you like it, Suzanne. Glad you like the card. So this suite has a ton to offer and it is a very simple stamp set. So I think you're gonna be happy with it. <laughs> Lee's got a new computer, how awesome is that? Awesome. All right, well, I'm gonna introduce myself in case there's anyone out there brand new. This is the part I always forget. And so if you are new tonight, say hello, tell us where you're from. Um, my name, hi Judy from Snowy Tennessee, so good to have you. My name is Tammy Shia and I'm a Stampin' Up! Independent Demonstrator of almost 13 years. It'll be 13 years in May and I'm just delighted that you've joined us tonight. And I've been doing Facebook Lives for almost two years now, so time does fly. Hey Debbie, you're gonna be so happy with the Art Gallery Bundle. You really will. Hi Peggy. <laughs> I'll show you all the card one more time, and then we're gonna start out with announcements tonight. All right? And we're probably gonna kick this up a notch or two when we create it tonight, and I'll show you how to do that, okay? 
All right, let's see. Um, where do I want to start? I want to start with my upcoming class, and it's called the Flower and Field Sampler and Card Class. Okay. Hi, Lori. Welcome. Okay, so I'm going to show you the cards first. Let me grab those. As always, I don't think there is ever a table big enough for all my stuff. I just love to spread out. So, okay, so here we go. Um, there are going to be eight cards, and here's the first two. Here's the second two, and two more, and two more. And it's all using the Flower and Field designer paper. And these card bases are awesome, and they come with coordinating envelopes, all right? Um, you're going to also notice some black matte dots that are going to come in your kit. But I'll get to your kit in just a second. Now I'm going to show you the sampler, all right? And here it is sliding on across the table here. This is a 12 by 12 sampler, okay? So I'm gonna go over with you what is included. Um, I don't have this flyer on my blog, but I'm gonna give you the information now. And actually, all of this information is over on my blog, okay? You just have to look at Monday's post and it's BeCreativeStamping.com, all right? So let me tell you what's included in your kit. You do get a half a package of the exclusive flower and field designer paper, okay? So a half a package. You're going to get a full package of the black matte dots, and you're going to get two and a half yards of the bumblebee ribbon, and you're going to get all the flower cuts, all those die cuts that you see, they're already pre-cut for you, okay? So all the die cutting is done for you. So thank you, Lori, I'm so glad you like it. I'm very excited about the sampler. They're so fun to make. All right, and it does include 10 card bases and 10 coordinating envelopes, but you'll only be making eight cards because two of the card bases are magenta madness and they don't really go with the paper, but you'll still get those along with the envelopes. So you can choose, you can select your, your kit. You can get just the sampler for $32.50 and all of this kit contents, or you can select just the cards and get all of the kit contents for $32.50, all right? Now, you can do both. So you can add on, let's say you wanna do both, so you purchase the sampler, you get the kit contents, and then you can add those cards for $12.50. So it makes the class $45, and if I am shipping to you, it'll be priority mail and it'll be $10, okay? So you can find all of that information over on my blog and I can show you at the end tonight um, how to find it on my blog. But just in case, um, it's www.becreativestamping.com for that information, all right? I am going to be having the class locally. It's going to be in Mechanicsville, Virginia on Saturday, March 20th. It is a very large room, and you can even re request your very own table to work. So you can work in a space that you're comfortable in with your own table. You just have to let me know, okay? So Lee's got a great question. What number sampler is this? And I think it might be sampler number five, Lee. So that's a good question. All right, um, let's see. What else did I need to tell you about this? It, it is um, online as well. If you wanna take it as an online class, you'll receive the kit 
and the online class will post, it will be emailed to you on March 18th, Thursday, March 18th, okay? And if you're a demonstrator and you just want the tutorial, that is also an option and it's $15 for the tutorial. The tutorial will include probably about 12 videos along with photos and assembly, okay? And it is a 12 by 12 page layout and we put it in a 12 by 12 frame. And I can give you all the information on the frame, super simple to go and buy, it is at Michael's. And so for anyone signing up, then I can give you those details, okay? Does anyone have any questions regarding the sampler or the cards? Just let me know. I'm kind of going through the comments just to see if there are any questions regarding that. All right. Hi, Joanne. Welcome. We're just showing the sampler, Joanne. And so you can see sneak peeks of the cards in the samplers right there in that photo. All right. You can email me if you have more questions. You can head over to my blog to check out the post. And you can even uh, use PayPal on my blog and purchase the class. All right. Okay. Well, if there aren't any questions about that, I'm going to set this aside. And the next thing I want to tell you about is February's tutorial. Um, we only have another week for this tutorial. I am part of the Demo Design Dream Team. I am one of 16 demonstrators that are part of this. And when you place a minimum $35 order in my online store, you will earn a B from my B rewards, and you'll also receive this tutorial absolutely free. All right, so keep that in mind. And this tutorial is available until Sunday, February 28th, all right? And I'll show you my B rewards in case you are brand new tonight. When you do place an order of $35, you earn a B. And for every $35 in purchases, you'll earn a B. When you have earned 10 Bs, then you can redeem this at the end of the month for $35 in free product. And I do keep track of it right here on the back, okay? Um, Lee, great question on the sampler. The sampler or the cards is $32.50. Then if you decide to add on to that and do both sampler and cards, then it's $45. It includes um, half a package of paper, ribbon, embellishments, card bases, envelopes, and tons of flower die cuts, tons. So um, it should be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it, and you can definitely do this at home in the convenience of your home, okay? Well, I think we're ready to get started on Air Suite. And if you're in um, one of my hostess clubs, this is what we're doing this month. And um, so you're gonna see it tonight, and maybe you saw it last night in club, or you're gonna see it this weekend on Friday or Saturday, all right? So let's move on over to the mini catalog. Now you may want pencil and paper tonight. I've got quite um, a few tips and, and techniques for you and you might wanna just jot them down. But we're working with this suite and I'll tell you what caught my eye from the very beginning. And that is the front cover. Okay, so this is the front cover of the mini catalog. And that card right there on the front had me. I knew I wanted that suite. I didn't know what it was called, but I wanted to learn how to do that gilded embellishing, all right? And that's exactly what we're gonna do tonight, okay? So on pages 32, 33, and 34 is the suite, all right? So let's head on back over here and let's look at the different products that are included in the suite, okay? 
So I, you know, it's always like, where do I start? Let me start with the embellishments. Those things are smaller and we'll get through those, okay? Hi, Mana, hi, Sandy. So I'm just gonna start with the ribbon and give you a close up of this. We'll get the small things out of the way. Um, this is the Fine Art Ribbon and it's got some flecks of gold in it and it's just really, really pretty and it's fairly easy to tie. Now, if you purchased my ribbon chair, you already have two and a half yards of this, okay? So you've got some of that. And then what else is in this suite? We've got this beautiful embossing folder, so let me show you that. And this is called Painted Texture. And yeah, this is the texture. We're gonna do this tonight. And so you're gonna get a, a close up look of how this looks on paper, okay? And the other thing is the, um, the Gilded Leafing, which is right here. And believe it or not, I have three classes this week, plus tonight, that's my fourth class for the week. I'll have plenty of this left over because this stuff, when you pour it out of the container, it grows. And you're gonna see me do that tonight, all right? And the heat and stick powder, and you're probably going, what is heat and stick powder? It's right here, and I'm gonna show you how to use it tonight, all right? Now, let's look at some of the bigger things. And we're gonna start with the stamp set. So the stamp set, I know, isn't this pretty, Tasha? It's so awesome. Um, this is called Art Gallery. It's the Art Gallery bundle. It's a stamp set with coordinating dies. And you're going to notice that um, just some very simple images in this set along with lots of words. This is a photopolymer stamp set, and most of the stamps I have taken out because they're on blocks. So it is photopolymer. And then over here, we have the dies. And as you can see, there aren't that many dies, but you're gonna find that they're very, very useful. So let's look at the dies close up. I'm just gonna move this out of the way. Okay, so this is the Floral Gallery dies, and I zoomed in way too much. You know what, I'll just do this. Let's just start here, okay? I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Okay, so you're gonna notice that um, there's a flower under here, a larger flower, and then you've got the stem, and then they have this other piece that you can stamp, and there's a die to cut it out, and then look what you can do. You can actually pop this up on top the flower. So you can make your flower three-dimensional. Then we've got these words, just want to say. Now let me show you why we have those words. The, the large words go with these smaller words, okay? For example, just want to say, I miss you. Just want to say congratulations. There's happy birthday, there's good luck, sorry, thank you, best wishes, you are lovely, and I'm thinking of you. So this stamp set can cover probably the entire year because of all the different words, all right? And yes, yes, Carol, we popped up this flower, and you know how we like to pop things up. You're gonna also notice these two dies. Now these become really useful because these two dies you can use for all the words in this set. For example, the smaller die, you can stamp sorry on it. I miss you, good luck, thank you, best wishes, all right? Now the longer die cut is perfect for, I'm thinking of you, you are lovely, a happy birthday, congratulations, and I miss you, all right? So both of these dies can be used for all the words, 
in the stamp set. So to me, that is very useful. And also, look at these dies. I mean, they can be used on any card, absolutely any card. Now, there's one more die here, and it's for this flower right here. And here it is, here on the stamp case. And here it is when you stamp it. Now, I have stamped this in Flirty Flamingo. And I've also taken the time to stamp one in Old Olive. So I'm gonna show you just a really quick little trick so that you can make your image have two colors. I have just trimmed off the flowers from this and I'm just gonna take a little bit of Tombow glue just in a couple little places. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm gonna take my, take your pick tool. I'm gonna pick that up. And then I'm just gonna lay this right on top, just like that. And now look at my stamped image, all right? So that's one tip for you right there. The flowers are just beautiful. And we're actually gonna talk about the colors and the ink colors that I used to um, stamp the flowers, okay? Excuse my reach, I am reaching over here to put that away. All right, so that's the dies and the stamp set, and now I'm going to show you the paper. Are you ready for the paper? Let me scoot that out of the way. Now, your paper is 12 by 12. I've cut mine down to six by six, okay? And if you participated in the ribbon share, not the ribbon share, if you participated in my paper share, this is in your box, okay? So look for that in your box. Okay, so let's look at it. Here's the first piece. They, these are very realistic images. Um, I really should have paid more attention in art class when I was in college, and I didn't. I love art, but I don't know a lot about different artists, but I'm told this is very similar to something that, um, you know, even Picasso may have done. So here's another one. And I'm gonna try and find if I have it. I may not have the back to that one, because I have really been using this paper. So let me show you the back, okay? All right, so that's that one. Then we have this. This paper looks so realistic. There's another piece. What do you think? I know, isn't this an awesome set? Here's another piece. And by the way, colors? There are so many cardstock colors that go with this paper. Love this, I'll show you this side first. I love this piece. I think it's probably one of my favorites. And then here's another one. And look at this one. How pretty is that? So that's the designer paper. Hi Lynn, welcome from Southern New Jersey. <laughs> Tasha says, I honestly thought I wouldn't like the stamp set. I am not a flowers person, so I naturally would have passed. Here's the other thing, Tasha. You probably know, as we all know, since we've been working with Stampin' Up, Stampin' Up has a lot of flowers. We have tons of flower images. And this one is just very different, so. All right, yeah, and that one, is this the second one, Laura? The second one is a tessellation. There you go, all right? Yeah, so the paper's awesome. Now, remember, it does come 12 by 12, okay? And Peggy, not to point you out, but I know you won't be in class this weekend, so this is um, a preview of what we're doing in class on Saturday, okay? Now, a little bit about the paper. Um, there's the item number if you want a full package. It's 1150, it's page 33 of the mini. And look at all of these coordinating colors. It's just unbelievable how many colors 
coordinate with this paper. All right, now I'm gonna show you something else. This is the designer acetate sheets and they're called Golden Garden Designer Specialty Acetate. Hi Mary, welcome. So this one kind of has like a mosaic image. The, I'm gonna show you three papers that come in this pack, okay? There are three in the package and they're the acetate sheets and they come 12 by 12, okay? So here's the first one. I, I wish I had a large piece of um, 12 by 12 designer paper to put behind that, but I think you get the idea of what that looks like. All right, now get ready for this. This is the second sheet of the acetate cardstock, okay? And you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually grab a sheet of cardstock, hang tight, I realize the 12 by 12 paper is right behind me. And I want you to get a better look. So there it is. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, and I forgot to tell you this. On the back, it's silver. So let's do this so you can see the silver. Okay, I have a lot of fluorescent lights here in my stamp room, so I know sometimes you get a reflection. So that's the silver. And then this is the gold, okay? But let me show you something else that I didn't realize until about two days ago. Remember this sheet of cardstock? I said it was one of my favorites. Here it is in a 12 by 12. And ladies, this matches it. It lays on top of this. Isn't this gorgeous? Can you just believe this? I love it. And I'm gonna show you how to cut it in a few minutes, all right? So, there's one of the, um, that's the second one of the acetate sheets. And now I'm going to show you the third one, which is right here. And I'm gonna get this paper again to put behind it so you can get a better idea. I think it goes this way. All right, so now here is the uh, third sheet, okay? I know, isn't this the coolest, Suzanne? This is the third sheet. This is the gold, and if you flip this over, you have silver, okay? Hi, Amanda. Hey, Mary Kay. All right, but hold on, okay? I'm, I'm gonna blow your mind again. Look at this 12 by 12 sheet right here. Ladies, this goes on top. This is another overlay. Can you believe this? This goes right on top and fits perfectly. How cool is that? All right. I know, isn't this awesome? It's beautiful, everything coordinates. Stampin' Up! has thought of everything. Now, if I flip it over to the silver, I don't know, I don't think it will coordinate, but it still looks very pretty on top, okay? If you wanna go with the silver look. One other thing, with the paper, um, there is clear, protection over it, all right? And so what I'm doing right now is, here we go, I think I'm actually gonna, hang on, I'm gonna use this. I wanna show you this, this is so hard to see. Okay, so it has a protective covering. Sorry, having a hard time grabbing that. So this comes off, this actually protects your paper, okay? All right, and I think, I wanna say it's just on one side, all right? That's what I'm thinking. So keep that in mind when you're using it, all right? Now, we're actually gonna use this piece of paper tonight, and we're gonna go on and cut it, all right? And I'm gonna give you some tips on cutting it. All right. 
And this is, I think this is directional paper, and so I wanna make sure that I am cutting, I will be cutting it correctly, so just hang tight. Yeah, it goes this way. Let me just check one other thing, make sure that I'm right. Okay, now for my card layout tonight, <laughs> I know, Gail, we should really frame the paper and not cut it, right? <laughs> I, we could line our dresser drawers in this. I mean, it's just lovely. Be great drawer liner, wouldn't it? All right, so tonight we're going to cut a piece for this card, and I wanna cut it four inches across by five and a half inches, okay? So this is what I'm gonna do, and it may not make any sense until I'm done, all right? Okay, I'm gonna start with the actual paper, and I am going to trim off one inch. And you're like, why are you doing that? And I'll show you why in a second, okay? All right, so my one inch is done. And now I'm gonna, I turned it now, okay? So now I'm back on the 12 inch side and I'm gonna cut it at four. And I'm gonna cut it at four again, okay? All right, now I'm, at, I'm trying to keep my paper in order so that I know Trying to remember how I cut it. And that's gonna be five and a quarter. And then, hang tight, I can't pick it up. Then this is also, well, it was supposed to be five and a quarter. What did, what did I do wrong? Oh, it's supposed to be five and a half, that's right. I did mess up, oh well. All right, I'm still gonna show you. Okay. I did mess that up. All right, so let's go ahead and see. I probably got my paper out of, out of the way now. I'm gonna zoom out. You'll understand in a minute what I'm doing. Does that, okay, so that works. I'm putting it back together like a puzzle, okay? All right. And no, I did not practice this before class tonight, okay? Because I only have two sheets of this. All right, now here is my one inch right here, but it really should have been, it should have been one and, let's see, this is probably a half inch here. It should have been one and a half inches is what it should have been. I So when I cut this, and you cannot even see that, hang tight, let me back up here. Well, come on. Hang on, let me move my camera a little bit. Sorry. I'm trying to zoom out. I must be zoomed out all the way. All right, let's do this. You're probably like, what is she doing? Okay, so here's that one inch. And then it really should have been, a, I should have trimmed off, okay, one and a half inches at the bottom. So I did not cut it correctly, okay? But these are the pieces, all right? Now, I'm gonna do something else, all right? I'm gonna bring my paper cutter back in. And let me line up my paper again first. You'll understand my madness in a minute. I just wanna be sure that I am getting everything. Do I have it? If I lay the acetate on top of the paper, um, it's gonna to stick to it, so I'm trying not to do that. So. All right, let's see here. All right, I think that's gonna do it. <laughs> that's right, Peggy, no mistakes in stamping, absolutely not. Okay, so ladies, now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna cut one and a half inches because that's what I should have done originally, all right? All right, 
So let me see. Yeah, one and a, a quarter and a quarter is a half. Hang on, let me do my math. I want to make sure that I do it correctly and I don't even have my pen over here. All right, four and a quarter. Ten and a half. Okay. All right. I'm now cutting the acetate and I'm getting rid of that one and a half inch. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna turn this to the 12 inch side and I'm going to cut it at four inches, all right? And again, at four inches. Okay. And I'll lay these together and then I'm gonna cut it at five and a half. No, I'm cutting it at five and a quarter because it's for my card. And I probably should not be cutting through all three pieces. All right, good, got that right. Okay. All right, now we can get rid of this. I know the math, Laura, you need to do the math for me. You're the math teacher, I need you. Okay. So now what I'm doing is, I'm laying this on top, okay? And I may not have it lined up correctly. All right, I don't. But you'll see my madness in a minute, what, I'm, what my thoughts are anyway on how to do this. And then here's my strip. Okay, so we made it to this point, and this is what I wanted to share with you. These panels are, are layer for a card, and you've got six cards right here, ladies, all right? You can use the one and a half inch as to trim a card to put some embellishment on it, but look at this. You've got six card panels right there, and that's what I wanted to show you, okay? Isn't that cool? All right, hopefully you think it's cool. So, all righty. And you can do that with that other sheet of paper as well, all right? Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we are actually going to do some stamping and I'm gonna show you all the different ways that you can stamp with this set, okay? All right, so here are my panels. I've got enough for six card bases, all right? And so that was the crazy math I was trying to show you. All righty, so now let's move on over and let's talk about our flowers, all right? And I'm gonna show you how to stamp your flower, okay? So this sheet of paper I am going to have over on my blog on, um, I'll have it on my blog this Friday and it'll be right under the replay video, okay, if you wanna pick one up. Now, the reason I bring up this chart is because it has the techniques and tips for doing the gilded leafing as well as more color combinations, okay? All right, um, Laura asked, can you cut the paper and the acetate together? You can. And that's probably what I should have done, Laura, and I don't know why I didn't think about that. That would have been a whole lot easier. So I have to do it that way next time. All right, was there a reason why you didn't lay on top of each other and cut both at once? Same thing, Suzanne, that's what I should have done. <laughs> so I've embarrassed myself now, Should that's what I should have done. Um, if you flip over to the silver side, Carol, um, the overlays, um, they do not fit the floral card stock, okay? And also, ladies, I think the reason I didn't do that was because of this. When you cut acetate, acetate is much thicker than, card, than designer paper, okay? So this can dull your cutting blade. Now for me, I have a fairly new trimmer and I've been using my blade for a while. And so um, I wasn't worried about dulling the blade tonight, okay? But that's a, one reason you might not wanna 
cut your designer paper and your overlay at the same time because of dulling your blade. You might wanna use an older blade when cutting the acetate sheets, okay? So just a thought there. All right, so we're gonna start with the large flower that is in the stamp set, and this is what it looks like. And then we also have an overlay. And this is what the overlay stamp set looks like. That's what I'm calling it, the overlay, okay? Now, I've already done the colors of Flirty Flamingo and Poppy Parade. So my first color for the whole flower was Flirty Flamingo. And then I came in with Poppy Parade as the accent color, okay? So now I'm gonna bring in my Stampin' Pad and we're gonna do Bumblebee together and Pumpkin Pie. So this will give you another, um, this is gonna give you another color combination, all right? And some of you have asked questions and I will get to those in just a second. This is a photopolymer stamp set, so that's why I'm using the pad, because I really need the cushioning, all right? So there's my bumblebee, and that's gonna be for my background, okay? And now I'm going to bring in pumpkin pie and this stamp set, all right? And I'm just gonna lay this on top. Now, here is some advice, okay? This second image does not line up completely with the first image, and that's okay, and that's what you want, all right? So just know that when you stamp with the second stamp set, you're not going to find perfect alignment, all right? So that's important to know, and that's bumblebee and pumpkin pie. Now the next two colors we're gonna try are pool party and Bermuda Bay. And I'm hoping I brought my stamp cleaner over here. Let's see. I'm gonna grab my stamp cleaner. because I definitely need to clean the stamps before moving on to the next set of colors. And I'm just using my simple chamois, all right? And I'm making sure that I've gotten that clean. And I'm gonna clean that second one right there, okay? All right, so pool party is gonna be our first color. And if you are in one of my hostess clubs, you will be receiving the chart in your club. And if you're not in one of my local classes, then the chart will be on my blog on Friday, all right? Oh, whoops, I just did the wrong color. All right, solid image now is going to be with pool party. So there's my pool party right there. And now we're gonna add Bermuda Bay. And again, I am just going to kind of lay that on top where I think it'll look nice. And then there's Bermuda Bay. So what do you think? There's three flowers right there. Now, at the bottom of my color combinations, I've also included four more, but there are millions, so you can experiment with all the different colors, okay? Um, here's Flirty Flamingo and Mary Merlot. You could try Poppy Parade and Real Red, Highland Heather and Gorgeous Grape, Misty Moonlight and Night of navy, all right? So those are just a few more color combinations for you. And then you're gonna also get the techniques and the tips, okay, that are also printed right here. If you decide to print this out on your home printer, 
I did use Whisper White cardstock because um, because I was stamping on it and I wanted the ink to to look like the the real ink color. If you put it on copy paper, it's not really going to look the same. So that's why um, why I printed it out on the Whisper White. Okay. All right, I know the color combinations are fun. One other suggestion, okay, just in case, and I'll do, let me do Bermuda Bay, okay? Let's say that you don't have Pool Party and Bermuda Bay. Let's say you just have Bermuda Bay, okay? So what we'll do is we will ink up the solid image in Bermuda Bay and then I'm going to stamp off, okay? I'm just stamping off some of that ink color, and then I'm gonna stamp again. Now, I'm on a folding table, so I, I am making sure I get a nice, nice impression, all right? So there's my Bermuda Bay. It would have done much better on a hard surface like a countertop or a table. All right, now I'm gonna leave it out because now, see this outline? We're gonna do this in Bermuda Bay, but it's full strength. And now we're going to stamp again. And now I have my color. So you really don't need two ink colors. You could stamp off with your first image and then full strength for your second image. Does that make sense? And by the way, this is called two-step stamping. All right, just in case you didn't know. All righty, let me clean those stamps because we will be using them again tonight. Sorry as I just shake everything. I'm so glad you got ladies like the like the chart, you'll be able to get it on Friday, and I'll remind you on my Facebook page, okay? All right, so I'm gonna move that out of the way, and I'm also going to now move the chart, all right? That's gonna be leaving us, and now we're going to, we're gonna talk about gilding, all right? The gilded leafing, all right? I know some of you had questions about the paper, so I'm just gonna back up a few minutes to see what they were, okay? Let's see. The silver side doesn't, um, it really doesn't lay correctly on the floral designer paper, Carol, okay? I haven't found a way for that, for it to do that anyway, all right? So that is a really good question. The first measurement on the designer paper, Leslie, you cut it at one and a half inches. So you're cutting one and a half inches off the bottom of the 12 by 12 paper, okay? Um, yes, you can use your guillotine paper cutter to cut acetate. You absolutely can. I have a rotary cutter, Carol, and I, I, I cut acetate with that all the time so that I don't dull my other paper trimmer blade, okay? All right, all right, all right. <laughs> I need lots of reminding myself. Um, okay, well, I'm glad y'all like the color combinations. Are you ready to learn about gilded leafing? Have any of you done this yet? Um, it's pretty cool. All right, I'm going to show you two different ways to do it, okay? So the first one that I'm going to show you is... Um, this technique, and let me show you what it looks like. When you look at this card on the screen, um, do you see the gold that is around the border of the, of the um, card base? There's a cardstock layer on the card base, and there's gold trim around that cardstock layer. So I'm hoping you can see that, and that's the technique that I'm going to show you right now, okay? So I am actually starting with a sheet of Whisper White cardstock. It is four inches across by five and a quarter inches. And so that's actually a layer. So let me show you what I mean by that. 
Here is a Poppy Parade card base. And this is the layer, okay? It's four inches by five and a quarter. <laughs> Yay, Joanne! Work's been closed for her and she is crafting tomorrow. I love it. All right, so for this particular technique, what you wanna use is tear and tape, all right? Now, if you're a new crafter, Air Tear and Tape is featured in the annual catalog, okay? And it's about a quarter of an inch wide. So what you wanna do with your Tear and Tape, and I've already done this little part, I have run that Tear and Tape along the side of that cardstock, okay? And I've done it all the way around and it's very close to the edge. So make sure you get it as close to the edge as possible, all right? Now the next thing that I'm going to do, let's see, I'm trying to think what will make the least amount of mess. I am going to go ahead and I'm just gonna peel off the paper, all right? So it's gonna be real sticky, and I'm just peeling this right off so that that tape is exposed. All right, does that make sense? All right. I'm sure a lot of us will have a couple of snow days here this week. Oh, I think I've done all four sides. Okay, all four sides are done, and I'm gonna set this aside to show you the leafing, okay? So this is the gilded, gilded leafing. And I am going to pour some of it in this container. Now, this is just a takeout container. I would actually recommend a shoebox um, or a rectangular container. Um, I didn't have one, but I think I would recommend that. But if you don't have one, use this. Okay, so this is the leafing. And honestly, it looks like Reynolds wrap but it is super thin, okay? It's not thick like Reynolds wrap, all right? Yay, Gail! Gail's closed tomorrow too! I love it! Yes, we will be doing the leafing technique this weekend in Costas Club. Great question, Laura. All right, ladies, I'm just gonna pour some out, okay? Just like that. It likes to stick together, and quite honestly, it's not as messy as you think it might be, I, I think glitter is messier. I really don't like to work with glitter. I didn't like working with glitter as a child. And um, gosh, I just remembered that after all these years. <laughs> it finally came out. I didn't like glitter as a child. So what I've done is I've got the leafing in there, okay? And now I'm gonna bring this back in and I am going to lay this in here all right, and you're probably going, oh my gosh, what is she doing? And I'm just making sure, and that's why a rectangle would be better because my rectangle card layer doesn't want to fit in the container. Now, all I'm doing right now is I am covering up all the gilded leafing, all right? I'm covering up the adhesive, that's what I meant to say, okay? So I'm covering up all that adhesive, and since I couldn't get my card all the way down in the container, I am just using my fingers to do it. And you can do that, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, all right? All right, I think I about have it, I see a few little corners over here. Okay, again, this stuff is pretty soft. All right, so that part is done. Are you still with me? Now I'm gonna bring in a sponge. We sell these sponges in the annual catalog. There are three in a package, all right? Now what I've done is, I've taken that sponge and I have cut it into a quarter. All right, so it's just a quarter of the sponge, all right? So now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take the sponge and I'm gonna rub 
all of the extra leafing. Do you see what's happening? I'm gonna rub all of that off that is not stuck. How cool is this? The sponge is a huge help. All right, and now I'm just going to shake. Look at my gold border. What do you think? What do you think? So that's why you want to get your tear and tape as close to the edge as possible so that you don't have any white showing. Now you can certainly go around your edges and trim a little bit, all right? Isn't that cool? It's just, it's super, super cool. It really, really is, all right? Now I'm gonna take my sponge out. I'm gonna show you, we're gonna do another technique, all right? There's another way to do this, but I'm gonna close this up and I'm gonna show you how to clean up. All right, and I do want to clean up between the two because um, I'm going to put my card layer down here. If you have a small vacuum, that works great. And if you don't, I use a sticky lint roller. And that's what I'm going to use right now. And I'm just going to clean up my surface. And by the way, I do this a lot. When I get little pieces of cardstock that are left over from the big shot, this is what I do. This is how I clean my work surface. All right, so now I'm back and it is clean and the gilding is done. All right, isn't that fun? Okay, so now we're getting ready to stamp and then I'm gonna show you the next technique, okay? All righty. So I am going to bring in some paper here and let's see all right i think that's all i'm gonna need right now because we're gonna do some stamping all righty so we're going to stamp our flower tonight um with flirty flamingo and poppy parade <laughs> okay all right i have to look at the comments let's see margaret says i hope it's 70 degrees tomorrow <laughs> I don't think it's gonna happen in Richmond. I was in Richmond last night. Everybody was talking about the weather, everybody. Okay, this is Flirty Flamingo, so I'm gonna get that out. I still need to clean this stamp a little. I see a little bit of Bermuda Bay on it, and I don't want that to, to mess up air creation. So hang tight. All right, I think I got that one clean, and now that's clean. All right. Okay, so we're gonna start now with Flirty Flamingo. Okay, and we're gonna stamp that right there. And then I'm gonna take some Poppy Parade, and that's gonna be my accent color. And remember, this is called two-step stamping, which I know all of you've done many times. All right, and so that is our flower. And I am going to we're gonna stamp the stem, and I actually, this block right here that I'm using for this stamp set is block D, and you know, I have like lots of block Ds, but obviously I don't have enough because I have to keep changing my stamps. I have to change them off of the block. All right, here we go, Old Olive. Now, Old Olive is gonna be for the stem, okay? And, We'll just put this right here. All right. Something else about this stamp set that you need to be aware of, it is not 
These images are not solid images. I want you to look and see how, how you have that variation in ink, okay? So it's not a solid image. So I don't want you to be expecting that and then not have it, all right? So that's what we're gonna cut out. I've already taken the time to cut out the happy birthday. And I'm gonna talk to you now about embossing this stitched rectangle. So this is one of our stitched rectangles from the stitched rectangles dies, all right? And we are gonna emboss, and we're gonna use that brand new embossing folder, okay, which is right here. Now, if you are making this card, let's measure this rectangle so you'll know which one it is. It is, um, the die is gonna be approximately two and five eighths by about four inches, all right? So something like that, that's the die that you're looking for, okay? Now we're gonna go ahead and cut out and emboss, but last night during class, we actually did the gilding and then cut out the flower. So it can be done either way. And I'm gonna go into that second technique after this is cut out, okay? So we wanna get this done first. And I'm going to need my um, standard stamp and cut emboss machine because of the embossing folder. This is a 3D embossing folder, so it's extra thick, and of course it's wide, so it will not fit in the mini, all right? So let's look at the sandwich because... Honestly, I can't remember our layers right now. All right. So, of course, we need our platform. And it tells us on the platform, if you're using a 3D embossing folder, you need cutting pad number one. Oh, I need the spe specialty plate, and I didn't bring it over here. Gosh darn it. Ah. All right. I need the specialty plate number four. Got to put my hands on that. Okay, so a number one, which is right here. Nope, that's a number three. Oh, sorry. This platform is number one. Sorry. All right. Then we're going to include this rectangle right here. Okay, now this is what the embossing folder looks like. And if you all don't mind, I am going to grab my plate four, okay? I'm so sorry I don't have it over here. Okay, it was right on my counter. This is gonna go right on top, okay? Because this is for that 3D embossing folder, all right? Okay, oh, this is really smooth. So Simone, what is the temperature right now in Orlando? What have your temperatures been like? All right, so there's air painted texture. Isn't that pretty? And it really does add a lot to the card, okay? Now the second thing we're gonna do is we are going to cut with air dies and this is an easy sandwich for us it's platform number one a cutting pad the paper and die and another cutting pad all right so hang tight let's get that cutting pad here that's a number three and then we have our flower and our stem all right and our magnetic platform is still not available just in case you're wondering okay all right we're stamping up is still working on that and i think i have everything lined up now i'm going to show you a trick this is a super super old trick okay it's it's nothing that i created you can take your washi tape and you can put a piece right there 
Washi tape is thin and it comes up very easily without ripping cardstock. And you can put, first we wanna get it right. We'll put it right there, that'll hold it in place. And now I'm ready for the next cutting plate. And then it's just gonna roll through, all right? Oh, by the way, um, Carolyn, the, the the paper that we just um, added, that we just used the embossing folder on, it's petal pink paper, and I did not mention that to you all. So that is petal pink, okay? Boy, that was smooth. All right, so that is out of the way. And now we can go ahead and we can pull this out and we can do it like that. All right, so that's my flower. And then here's my stem right here. I'm gonna put my dies away so that I don't forget about them and lose them. And here's my other flower right there. Okay, so now that's put away for us. And now we're gonna get back to the gilding again, all right? Okay, so for the flower, there are a couple of different um, stamps that you can use to do that. And I'm gonna show you a sample that I've made. In this picture right here, you're going to notice the flower without the gilded leafing, all right? It's just the flower by itself. And it looks great, right? So adding the gilded leafing is kind of like an embellishment, all right? So here it is without. And then right here, it's actually this image right here okay it's the smallest one and it's right here okay so I want you to know which image I'm I'm showing you and that is the one that I used for that all right so you can get four different looks with one stamp set and one flower now the next one is this one, okay? And that's a little bit bigger, and it's right here, okay? And it goes right there. If I were to use that, that is what it would look like, okay? And again, there's no exact, um, you know, coordination to it. It's just basic stamping on top of the flower image. I know, isn't this fun, Carol? Okay, now look at this flower. This one is stamped, the, the, the first stamp is poppy. And guess what the second stamp is? It's this right here with the gilded leafing. All right, so same flower four different looks from one stamp set, okay? And then this is the petal pink that I did texture, okay, with the embossing folder, all right? I know, it's so cool to see the progression. I love the building. I love how you can take this stamp and add these additional features. You can also add it here, ladies, this little one right here goes right on top of this flower as well. All right, so it's really, really cool. All right, so let me show you how to do it, okay? All right, so this is our, our flower. And gosh, I don't know which one I wanna do. Let's look again. I kinda like this one, so I'm gonna go for middle of the road, okay? All right, you're gonna need a few more things for doing this. First, I will need this image right here, all right? And then I'm also going to need a tray, which is right here. I'm going to need Versamark ink, which is the same ink that you use when you're embossing, all right? So I need that. I'm going to need the 
gilded leafing, and I'm going to need my sponge, all right? I'm going to grab a sip of water here. I know, I like the middle one too, Carol. I'm glad you like it. Okay. So how many of you have this set, but you haven't touched it yet? Oh, the other thing you're going to need is the heat and stick powder, okay? And this is part of the suite, all right? So let's start with Versamark. And I am going to just ink up this smaller image, because remember, I'm going middle of the road. I'm just gonna stamp it here in the center. It really doesn't have any guidelines, okay? I'm gonna cover up my Versamark. I'm gonna zoom in for ya. I'm gonna use a clothespin. <laughs> I'm gonna use a clothespin right here and heat and stick. So Laura, it sounds like I have your order or your B reward order. One or the other, you have ordered this. This is heat and stick powder, okay? And what you're gonna do is you're gonna pour it over that sticky area. Okay, it's just, it works like embossing powder. It's gonna be the same technique. Thanks for sharing, Melissa, I appreciate that. Now I'm going to shake, because I'm shaking off the heat and stick that I, that I don't need, okay? Now I don't know if you can see that, but actually I think you can. See the powder there? All right, here we go. The next thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to add some gilded leafing. Oh, you, no, I'm not. Sorry, messed up. We gotta heat first. So we're gonna heat up. Let's see if I can get this just right. We have to heat our heat and stick powder first. I'm sorry, I skipped a step. Wasn't even thinking. All right, and this only takes a second. And you want to do it until it feels sticky. I think I could actually heat that a little bit more. So that's what I'm doing with the heat tool. Turn that off. Oh yes, now it's sticky. I'm gonna do a little bit more. That should do it. And then all you have to do is Stick the gilding right on top. Let me zoom in so you can watch me do that. Okay. And I actually about have it. You're just covering up the sticky. That's all you're doing, all right? So it's super, super easy, okay? Now, the next thing we're gonna do is, we're gonna take that sponge, all right? And we're gonna rub the excess off, okay? The excess gilding off. And that is my flower. Isn't that fun? So remember, you can leave it plain you can use the smallest stamp and just do the center. You can use the middle of the road stamp, which is what I just did. Or you can use the largest outline stamp, okay, right there. So you've got choices for your gilded leafing. Now at this point, before I put my card together, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna clean my work area again, okay? And as you can see, it's not bad at all. It's certainly a lot easier to maintain than glitter. Okay, and then of course you can throw this sheet away when you're done. All right, well we're gonna be ready now to put our card together. You're going to notice that this card has a whisper white card base. But after creating this, I decided I wanted Poppy Parade. So this is a Poppy Parade card base right here. It measures four and a quarter by 11 inches. 
and then I scored it at the five and a half inch mark, okay? So that's the first part, and then we're going to add, this is where we're gonna add our um, acetate to our designer paper, okay? Now the way I do that is, I just take a glue dot and I just put it in the very corner. So that's gonna be all four corners, okay, that you're gonna do that. All right, and then I'm just gonna lay this on top, just like that, okay? And now I'm going to use my stamp and seal. I know, it's really easy, I'm, I'm just, I'm just amazed at how easy it is, and I honestly hope it carries over to our annual catalog. All right, so I've gotten some stamp and seal there. Let me take my bone folder and get a better score line here. And then we are going to add this. We're just going to center it just like that on the card base and you don't even see the glue dots, okay? So super easy. Now the next thing we'll do is we're going to pop this up onto the card base and I'm gonna use dimensionals to do that. I was making sure I had the right side. Any questions about the gilding, about the products, anything like that, just let me know. Now, one of my gals last night, you see how I have mine kind of over to the side? One of my gals last night, and this was so cute, she did it like this. So I'm gonna do it like this so that I can show you. I'm going to take this and I'm gonna pop this up as well. Now, last night when we created our flowers, we actually did our gilding before cutting it out, okay? I like the Poppy Parade too, Joanne. Um, I think it makes it pop more. So yeah, it does make, a, it's amazing. It does make a big difference. I liked it better than Old Olive. I liked it better than Mossy Meadow. I think I tried Calypso Coral. So, you know, tried quite a few colors and I think I like the poppy the best. So that is my flower. And it comes together super easy. Put that right there. Let's go ahead and, uh, well, you know what? We'll get our words on. And I've already stamped my words and cut those out because that's a rather simple thing to do. Um, I wanted to get to the bigger things tonight, like showing you how to do the gilded leafing. I'm using my minis here, and then I'm going to peel this off. All right. I'm so glad you like it. <laughs> oh, yeah, Gail does like her things straight. Yep. All right. I'm going to bring that over like that. What do you think so far, girls? I think the poppy makes it look better, and I, and I love this, the offset of it. I think it's super cool. I'm going to be using some gilded gems. These are in the annual book. And um, they are like, they're just super fun. They're three different sizes. So I'm gonna use all three sizes on the card. And Laura says, what did you use to cut out the word tag? Oh, Laura, that is part of the dies. All right, so that's just one of the dies. Good question. All right, I need one more gilded gem right there. I think that really adds to it as well.